Secret Golf with Elkin Noxie, the podcast live from the Players' Championship at TPC Sawgrass in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. I'm Noxie, and every day this week we are at the Sawgrass Marriott Resort. It's gorgeous here. We're having a lot of fun. We're talking all things golf with Golf Talk America, and we are catching up with our players for daily podcasts as well. Yesterday we spoke to Ryan Palmer and Jason Kokrak. They stopped by for chats, and it was good to talk to them. You know, they just been on the range they hadn't played the course yet um, they were talking about stuff that they'd been working on how they feel about the course in general their season to date and then of course what they hope for the rest of the season as well so those podcasts are on itunes or however you listen to your podcasts go find them now and also we have elk talking about his 1991 victory here at tpc sawgrass elk has won it twice and a couple of weeks ago i had a chat with him to really delve deep into the two wins. We talk about the stats, the shots, we talk about how he was feeling, the nerves. I mean, the win in 1991, and that was, you know, really a life-changing win for him. The win in 1997 was very, very different, as he'll tell you right now. It's secret golf. Players' Championship in 1997. It was the 24th tournament. And, you know, for you, you'd already won six years prior. You'd won the Doral Open in Florida three weeks before. So you must have been feeling great heading into the players. No doubt. I was playing great. I, I, I'd, I'd had a couple, like three or four seasons in a row where I was playing great. I knew going to the players that that was going to be a place where I could do well because... I don't hit the ball that far, but I hit the ball really straight. And that suits me at players because a lot of guys, you know, hit it really far, have trouble there because it, the ball goes too far. It goes down there too far and they get all tied up in the, you know, in the rough and so on. So suits me really well, irons especially. And, and like I said, uh, putting for me at players has been really super for me. And I can't really explain that other than, I'll try to as we go on here about the putting because I know you're going to put some statistics on me that I've never heard before. By the way, we didn't really cover, we didn't really go after statistics uh, back then. Well, um, looking at your stats, you were, of course, well, you led the field in putting throughout the whole week. You were tied third in greens and regulation, um, tied second in putting greens and regulation. You know, so the putting stat is the big one, and that's the one that that led you to the victory. Yeah, well, uh, as you just said, if you're if you're if you're a third in greens hit and first in putting, then you're going to win by seven, like I did. So, um, it was my best performance physically. I was leading after round one, and everyone was, you know, in the locker rooms, "Hey, Elk, way to go, good round, dude, way to go," all that. And then second round, I was still leading, and you know, guys are cleaning out the lockers that missed the cut. And then third round, I was leading, and now guys are kind of staying away from you, you know, almost like a pitcher that's thrown a no hitter. By the time I got to Sunday, nobody wanted to talk to me because I was, uh, you know, kind of by myself and, and I was leading the whole way and it was it was lonely, but uh, it's okay. Um, well, I mean, it's you, okay. You started, I wanted that trophy. On the Thursday, you started with a 66. Uh, yeah, you had 11 putts on the front side. You one putted 11 of the first 13 holes, which is unbelievable. How dialed in were you at that point? Well, of course, I mean, there's no way that you could explain it other than just... Uh, Know the course well, confident. Uh, had a kind of I, I adopted a similar putting style, kind of a wide stance with a weak left hand grip turned under, so that I could had a bow in my left wrist. And when I when I was putting, I, I didn't have any uh, wobble in my stroke. I had a real drag stroke, and it worked for me there before. And I'm not exactly sure it, it's worked in other tournaments. Not as well as it did though at, at players. Sometimes when you go back to a place. You say, man, I made I made this exact putt right here, right on this hole, uh, and I was putting this way. Let me put my hands right here. Let me feel like I thought then. Anyway, I just zoned in on something, and I was just I was just locked in on 
the the break. And uh, I went to Dave Pell's one time to see how I was terrible at putting for a while, and and he put me on this uh, this drill where you have a a laser on your putter and, and, and you get 10 feet, five feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, and you turn the laser on. It shows you where you're aiming, right? Like a mouse hole. Mm-hmm. And I was terrible at every length. I was left from five feet, right from, you know, just all over the show, right? So I I got mad at myself and I, I walked up. I kept walking up closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the wall because I wanted some success. I finally got to where I was a hundred out of a hundred and that was from two inches from the wall. That's how bad I aimed. (laughs) So I took that idea and I said, if I'm so good from two inches, then all I got to do is read the break and aim at something real specific, two inches in front of me. This is my belief system. This is what I did. And that's what I did. I did it when I won the PGA. I I aim at something just two inches in front of me because I'm so good at aiming from two inches. Uh, And that's, that's how I built that putting uh, action. Amazing. Well, as we said on, on the Thursday, it worked. You shot 66 on the first round. You were actually eyeing a 64 when you were standing on the 18th tee, though. And then um, a, a double bogey on the last hole. Can you remember what happened there? Must have choked on something. Where'd I go? In the trees? <laughs> I must have went in the trees or something. I think I went, I didn't, I don't think I went in the water. I think I went in the trees and got tangled up over there on the right short front and three putted, yeah. I think. Now, a tournament where you're... That hurt. Where, yeah, I was going to say, well, it didn't really make a big difference in the grand scheme of things, did it? No, I didn't, but... A um, tournament where you are leading wire to wire, you know, as you said, on the final day, nobody wanted to talk to you. <laughs> how, how are you feeling on the final day going into that round thinking, you know, I've got such a huge lead here? I remember my tea time was like two o'clock, so I stayed in my room, practiced my putting. I had a little ramp thing that I was putting on. I was just practicing three-footers for hours, and... I had already swung the club a lot, so I didn't want to get out there because I didn't want to really do any interviews and talk to anyone. So I remember getting uh, to my to the parking spot like 15 minutes before I teed off that day, like 1.40, I got to the golf course. Walked in, and all the TV camera crews were waiting for me, and they said, Elko, we need an interview. I said, sorry, boys, I'm running late. And they're thinking, well, running late? This guy's leading the tournament. How could it be running late? Anyway, I was just winding them up, but I um, – I didn't want to be out there too long, so I went and hit like ten shots and walked mm-hmm. straight to the first tee, and and off I went. It was uh, it was a real mission, you know. I was on a mission. <laughs> now, when you won in '91, we spoke about your shot on 18 because you played out of a divot, went on to birdie the hole. You chipped yeah. in for birdie on 18 to seal the deal and and win the 1997 Players Championship. But that was just showing off, right? Absolutely, you got to you got to show off in front of. The, all my fans wanted me to see it. <laughs> no, um, I uh, I remember a couple of things about '97 that I want to share with you. One was on '17, I um, my great friend Dave Ma, who uh, is a member of Champions Club here, who uh, won the PGA at Laurel Hills, and great friend of Mr. Burks. He was one of my mentors, and he was very ill at the time and finished up dying maybe two months later from that day. But as I came up to 17 and I walked over to the island hole. Dave was on the call from me on 17. And when I putted out from my par and I was walking off the island to um, go to ATT, I didn't want to look up, but I had to because I, I, I knew how ill he was. And I knew if I looked up, I might cry. And he was out of the box and he had his arm hooked around the side of it. And he was clapping up, up, up high above his uh, hands above his head. And he was so frail at the time I looked up there and i about cried and um and uh, i just remember my friend and i only got to see him one more time after that but um it was amazing time for me uh that day i was right up there probably you know in the top five in the world ranking and this was going to close to be number one in the world i finished up being number two and um you know chipping in on 18 was it was over i remember johnny miller saying oh he's not taking much time here well i was up by six i mean i was over the green in two it was almost like what am i going to do study this chip to, and I just chipped it and went in. I mean, that just goes <laughs> to show sometimes how mentally yeah. uh, focused you are. It's just like, why am I, why is everyone taking so much time? If, if it's just, anyway, my point is I just let, I just let what my body wanted to do. Just, yeah. just hit the ball. Elk. Just hit the ball. It's not that big a deal. And boom, went in. So mm-hmm. it wasn't without thought. It wasn't without, it wasn't lucky or anything. It was just, it was just maxed out on my golfing ability that day. So you can just tell that 1997, 
It was a very different state of mind for Elk and, of course, a very different outcome, winning by seven shots. It was an annihilation of the field. You could call it that for definite. But, um, you know, two massive, massive wins for Elk and so much so he even has a gate named after him here at the Players' Championship, the Elkington Gate. I plan to walk through it over the next few days. So we are going to be catching up with Elk tomorrow. He's going to be talking about the course in general, uh, obviously how it's changed over the years. They made a few modifications to it, especially last year. And also with the tournament moving back to March next year, how that is going to change things. Of course, it is going to shake them up a lot. We're also going to be catching up with the rest of our Secret Golf players over the next couple of days. So those podcasts will be posted on iTunes as soon as we have them ready. And also we're doing our shows with Golf Talk America every single day the wonderful Frank Bassett and you can find them on pgatour.com just go to the podcast section and then it's Golf Talk America we're keeping our social media up to date as well Twitter, Facebook, Instagram it's all secret golf and I'll be back with another podcast with Elk tomorrow (laughs) 